people ask, what can we do? And this harkens back to those things I just mentioned about the landmark study. Things that we can do to prevent, slow down, put off the disease. There are risk factors. Unfortunately, though, with Alzheimer's, there's some risk factors you can't do anything about. We haven't yet figured out what that, um, you know, the, the, the uh, fountain of youth is. We all age, and age is the most common risk factor. As we get older, we're more susceptible to dementia. Gender is also something we really can't do anything about. More women than men have dementia, and particularly Alzheimer's disease. Um, there's still a lot of research going on about why this is. It's been posited that perhaps it has something to do with female hormonal changes. The other thing is, as women, we live longer than men. The third thing that is beyond our control are genetics. But you would be surprised to learn that genetics are a very small portion of people who develop Alzheimer's disease. Most cases of dementia or Alzheimer's are considered sporadic. You may have a familial history of it, but it may not be the reason why you develop dementia. There may be other reasons. Less than 5% of all cases of Alzheimer's disease are related to familial Alzheimer's disease. And for these people, you see people developing the disease early, younger, and it tends to be fairly aggressive. Other conditions may also play a genetic factor. But here's the good news, people. There are risks that we can look at that help reduce our risk. You know, uh, in 2017, there was literature that came out and they were able to back it up with empirical data that showed that dementia rates had actually declined. People said, what the heck is going on here? Well, in 2017, there was an article in The Lancet that looked at 12 modifiable risk factors that account for about 40% of all dementias. So what, what are those risk factors? So things like making healthy choices. You know, I'm going to sound like everybody's mother here. Everything in moderation. They talk about, there's been, you know, definitive um, presentation that if you have a significant cardiovascular risk, it can create or, or can lead to dementia. So smoking is one of those big bad things that people who have, who are smoking, have a higher risk of developing dementia. Other things such as high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, all of these things could contribute. And if modified, can also be something that would lower risks if you're able to modify those things. Um, alcohol, recently, you're showing that alcohol, excessive drinking, has an impact as well. So this is one area that you could look at your own health and see if there are things that you can moderate here that may help you. Number two, there's research that shows that staying physically active, and, and we're not talking about running a marathon here. We're just talking about basic, get off the couch and go for a walk. 30 minutes of exercise daily, walking, purposeful exercise, can lead to better health which leads to better, lowering your risks of dementia. You know, I think there's a lot of different ways of getting exercise, but maybe one of the best ways is dancing. I love dancing, can't do it now because I got a bum knee, but I can move around in my chair. You know, the any kind of exercise, anything that gets that heart rate up. Think about ballroom dancing. It's an activity that requires you to, to use your mind, to be social, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, and also 
to do exercise. You're moving, you're getting a sweat. So there's a growing um, body of literature that suggests that exercise, specifically aerobic exercise, can help moderate risk for developing dementia. And, you know, there's also research about strength balance, strength and balance things as well, also very good for you. Number three has to do with eating well. You know, our mothers were all right when they said everything in moderation. We now know that there are things that we can do. You know, our North American diet that is heavy in fried foods is probably not the best thing for us. What is the mind diet? You ask that. That's come out of Baycrest. And it is research that is showing that by eating sort of a Mediterranean-based diet, that includes a little bit of everything, it makes life better for you. It also improves your ability to ward off some of those, <coughs> I'm sorry, some of those risk factors that are affected with raising your risk for dementia. You know, we are talking, and you do see me have wine there, and you say to yourself, but Andrea, you told me not to drink too much alcohol. Well, there are antioxidant, and there are also studies that show moderate drinking of things like alcohol in a very low moderation can help. Um, chocolate. My one of my favorite things, dark chocolate has an antioxidant. So all of these things, Mediterranean diet, the research is just starting to come in. You know, um, I, I would say that if you have an opportunity to look at your diet, look at it and look at that mind diet. The research is out there. It's on Baycrest website. You can just put mind diet, M-I-N-D. And they, all those things to tell something I can't remember, but it's a Mediterranean based diet. You know, they're talking about grains, they're talking about vegetables, they're talking about eating berries and beans and limiting cheese. That's my big downfall. Talks about challenging your brain. There's lots of different ways of doing that, um, but engaging your brain, staying curious, asking questions. Those Sudokus, those word, word crossword puzzles. I'm very heartened to hear research that came out this week talking about um, gaming uh, on the computer. Um, apparently, that is showing that it's not harmful to your kids. It's actually helping them to think better. It's the brain is just laying different pathways down. And in fact, there's a piece of research that come out of California of course, where they have all of the computers and stuff, um, where they're doing uh, artificial intelligence and virtual reality with people who have dementia and how it slows the process. We're also talking about using new technology, but not relying on it. Um, I impress my young staff. I'm in my 60s and I have a lot of staff in their 20s and I was doing math. I was adding things in my head. They were shocked. But you know what? I do that to keep my brain lubed up, oiled up, working. Things like you're doing today, attending lectures, listening to music, um, reading, writing, staying engaged, the creative arts, you cannot underestimate those. So the other thing that research shows, and you can just keep clicking because I've got all of these um, uh, things up there. They're saying too, learning a language in your later years. It's hard to do, but it's another thing that challenges your brain. If you go down to the last point, I talk about changing the way you do things. There was research done a long time ago, but it showed that even by, you know, we all have routines that we do. We get up, brush our teeth a certain way, we put our clothes on a certain way. There's research that shows even if you moderate that a little bit, you're changing pathways in your brain. So instead of brushing your teeth with your right hand, brush it with your left hand. Instead of going home the same way on the in the car, pick a different route and see how you get home. Those things are all challenging your brain. 
staying socially active. You know, in England, they have um, a ministry of loneliness. They found, and the research out of the UK is pretty strong, and it's been supported across the world, that people who are socially isolated or living with loneliness, and we've all certainly experienced this over the last two years, have a challenge. They cannot um, function as well. So the research is showing that social isolation can actually increase one's risk for dementia. So. However you do it, whether it is on this way, on the computer, I, whether it's, you know, joining a club now that we're able to get back out and do things. I have, um, I live in a, an apartment building. There's a lot of seniors in the building. They tend to congregate outside now that the pandemic is finished. We hope it's not, but that, that, you know, I watched them all through the pandemic. In fact, they would haul their lawn chairs out to the parking lot, sit seven feet. There was one person who would measure people all with their masks on because that socialization was so important for them. So staying socially active is important. I love this picture. A healthy, strong brain in the middle of that muscled body. But that's what we need to do to keep our brain fit. We've got to use it. What's that old adage? Use it or you'll lose it. Music